Hello guys and welcome, this is Bart13T Casting and I'm recording today as well. I have a scrim of LAO versus QS here and today with me shoutcasting is actually one of the players from QS, Dangerous, um, to kind of explain this, not really weird, but this lineup and basically what they were thinking, what they were doing, so you guys can see really what they were looking to do in this game. So what's going on Dangerous, what are you up to? Um, not much, just chilling here in a showcast with you. Um, yeah, so if you guys see it, our picks are like Tempest, Keeper of the Forest, Zephyr, Dement Shaman, Soul Stealer. We're basically going for like an ulti lineup, and throughout the game you'll see how it works out as such. It's kind of weird, but that's what Dement picked. And now, real quick, I just want to go over to LAO's lineup here. We got Valkyrie. Wretched Hag, Pharaoh, Hammerstorm, and Pyromancer. And then I want to go back to something you just said. Um, you said Dement makes the picks for you guys. Is he, he's your captain? Mm, see, the thing was, we were never too sure at first. The sweeps did the picking for a long time. I did the picking actually back in the HBV days, but um, Dement's come. He's got a lot of experience from Dota, and just from a few games we did, he's picked some strange lineups like this one and it's just worked out so well so we're just going to continue he seems to be able to see beyond what most people see like uh, he's really good at planning ahead and i'm just hoping yeah we'll keep doing these sort of lineups and it looks like we're gonna live through this pause here but um yeah, right now, I mean, just looking at the lineups, I would expect a Legion victory. Um, we're not going to ruin the ending, though, but that's just what I'm saying. I mean, if you look at LEO's lineup right now, they got uh, Wretched Hag, Pyromancer, Valkyrie, Pharaoh, Hammerstorm. So, And it looks like we're going to have a Hag solo mid here. Or Pyro, Hammerstorm top, which is a very strong lane. You got that double stun wave. Wretched Hag will get level 6 quick, probably look to gank. And then Valkyrie, Pharaoh down bottom, which is an excellent lane because Pharaoh's Wall of Mummies, his uh, Hellfire can help Valkyrie line up that arrow and just get an easier kill. But I'm not going to put you guys out of the game just yet. I mean, you have Soul Stealer, you have Zephyr, and Tempest and Keeper of the Forest are two huge heroes. Uh, a lot of crowd control there, especially from Tempest and Keeper. Just... And then you got Zephyr to follow that up with his slow, and then the Soul Steel Ultimate, obviously, to clean that up. Um, I think really what's going to be the defining factor in this game, though, is, is if Soul Stealer, played by Orbwalk, can outfarm this uh, Wretched Hag and make sure she stays off the bottle or the runes and doesn't have a lot of charges on the bottle. But. Real quick, I just want to uh, let everyone know what was going on. You guys said you scrimmed LAO more than a few times in in this day or um on that day we scrimmed them actually four times in total it was there was, so it's good playing against clans like Elio etc you, you don't get much of a chance always i mean we're always struggling to have five on but when we do we always seek the higher level scrims because uh, to be honest it's really boring just pub stomping etc so you know, when you have a top team that you can play, you're going to keep playing against them because well, why not? You're gonna gaining experience and having fun at the same time. And now, um, I've been talking to a few of your players, and I don't know, what, what was your real, what was the real backstory on QS's Dota experiences? I don't really know how that worked out. Um, well, actually, I've never played Dota. And to anything, I only ever done Dota pubs, and you know how bad they are. Then the man is the only one with proper Dota experience. He played for some clan. I'm not too sure which name it is. So Arvok had some Dota experience, and well, Shreeps as well. He never actually played Dota. He's a proper just Hon player. He's never actually done anything. He's never played a game like this before. So it's quite surprising in that way. Yeah, that's because I mean I was talking to uh, Pityness one time, and he had when he told me that I just found it so hard to believe because for a clan like you guys that's strictly Han based, I think that sets an example for at least some of the rest of the community where we have a lot of new players coming from other games like Counter Strike Source uh, and FPS shooters who come here and 
and have been told that they'll never be good at this game. But I mean, I think you guys are a prime example that that's just completely wrong. But um, why do you, why do we have Keeper of the Forest warding the creep spawns up top, and you put Tempest in lane there? I, um, is there any real reason behind that, or? Um, I'm guessing they warded that to be able to counter the ward, but they put the ward slightly too far to the right, so they never was able to counter that ward, which is kind of poor play on Peyton as for not getting the enchanted tree in the right position. Um, as you see on the as well, we only have a solo keeper of the forest, and Tempest does swing in every so often to assist them in the lane, but. Um, th th all we wanted from that was to get the Keeper of the Forest to level 6 and not worry at all. I mean, it's not exactly the ideal situation having a solo melee, but a hero like Keeper can sort of pull that off because high base damage and HP and an invisibility, so if he does get in a sticky situation, he can just escape it. And it looks like uh, Zephyr's having a little bit of trouble down bottom there against this Valkyrie Pharaoh lineup, which I'm just gonna is just guessing here. Pharaoh's probably just spamming that snot rocket as soon as it comes off cooldown, um, and just really harassing Zephyr. It looks like he's taking a bit of a beating there, but he's got those cyclones, so it won't really lose too much HP. And it looks like Orbwalk picks up his bottle mid now at the three minute mark, um, as well as Wretched Hag. So they both got bottles now, and it looks like they're gonna have a bit of a race to this uh, illusion rune here. And instead of getting it, it looks like he's just going to try and nuke her off a bit. Still no first blood, by the way, but it looks like we're about to see it here on Wretched Hag. Uh, instead, she gets that blink. I'm looking for a luck nuke. Oh! Uh. Orbwalk goes down for first blood. Tempest a little bit slow getting down there, but... Uh, kind of poor play from Orbwalk right there, to be honest. I mean, he's never going to catch the hag there, because she can just blink away if she's in danger. And Kite her as such. She can. She has a mobility advantage, so I don't know why he sat there and actually tried to fight. I mean, obviously, I, I just don't know what's going on there. Uh, but I mean, like I think, like you were saying before, I think Keeper of the Forest is actually a great solo lane melee hero because of his incredible survivability he does bring to the game. And if he can get that rushed ultimate, I mean, it's all the better. He doesn't really need items, I don't think. Uh, maybe refresh blink, something like that, but. All he really needs to do in team fights is run in, throw down his ultimate. I mean, especially in this situation, you have him just to run in there, throw down his ultimate, and uh, hold on, let's just go down bottom here. We got Demented Shaman in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Looks like he eats a Valcaro. I go open. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is you. I forgot. But yeah, see, like right there up top there, Keeper of the Forest in goes invisible, dodges that double stun uh, nuke kill there. But, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, I think it's a great choice you guys actually did that because for Keeper of the Forest, like I was saying, you really only need him to th run into teams, throw down his ultimate, and then just let Tempest and Soulstealer follow it up, really. So, I, I definitely understand why you got him up there. I mean, the, the thing is, if we put a Zephyr up solo, he wouldn't have been able to do anything, you just have to die instantly. Um, if you put Soul Stealer up there, that would not be ideal for him. Oh, sorry, t action up top, Tempest got us, like, basically double nuke down. Keeper didn't have the invisibility ready to save him, but I'll get back to my point was, um, yeah, the lanes, th th we've got really weak lanes in a way, except in the Soul Stealer mid, but problem is, if you put Soul Seer up top, he needs to have rune control. He can't, he can't actually, he's, he's not an ideal hero on side lanes, he'll just die if a pyro hammer was on him. We couldn't put him there, so he had to stay mid. And because of that, Zephyr needs a partner, so we had to put Demetrius Shaman down bottom. So the only situation that we could really use was Keeper of the Forest. I mean, I don't think it's the best. He's, he can't really stop the farm of Hammerstorm, and he can't really kill, he just is there to soak up experience and that's it. And I don't really know what LA, LAO is doing at this point. They have three winged couriers, which I think is a little bit uh, weird. I mean, Purple's using it to cycle his bottle, as well as Teal. Um, and I guess Dark Blues is just there, but that's well, a bit sketchy. Well, uh, it's a it's sort of a tactic, I, I don't know, I think Elio will start to do because I noticed that in other games we're playing them against. 